<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I got another entry here, but if you're new, I like to make these videos about films I enjoy and want to share. Usually, I uh, do a lot of horror, maybe some 80s throwbacks to films that I don't really hear much about anymore, and occasionally I work in a new title that may be of a different genre. And um, just recently, I started working in some TV shows, so if you end up uh, liking this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and sticking around to the end and sharing the video and all that stuff as it really does help out the channel quite a bit. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, um, I got another entry here for a show, that being The Fall of the House of Usher from 2023. Now this is a Netflix show that was created by Mike Flanagan, who you may be familiar with his work on The Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting of Bly Manor, Midnight Mass, and Midnight Club, as uh, well as various films such as uh, Doctor Sleep and Oculus. And the basic synopsis for this uh, film is as follows. To secure their fortune and future, two ruthless siblings build a family dynasty that begins to crumble when their heirs mysteriously die one by one. So, on top of all that, we get some Edgar Allan Poe. This is, um, you know, thrown into the mix as it's inspired by the Poe story, The Fall of the House of Usher, using a similar format for having the story told is kind of like part of a confessional of sorts. Um, along with that, um, every episode in this single season show is tailored towards and named kind of after a Poe story or an aspect of a Poe story, such as, you know, um, episodes named after, you know, Midnight Dreary, Mask of the Red Death, or the Black Cat, and so on. Um, so if you're familiar with any of those stories, whether it's from the writings themselves or um, other adaptations, such as some of those older AIG films from like decades ago, you'll recognize various themes throughout. However, that recognition won't really spoil anything as they're not being, you know, they're only really being used as like a backdrop and like a loose outline for some of these episodes and the overall story, just some aspects of them. They're not really being adapted specifically episode by episode, so to say. Um, and uh, this was an interesting one that I had to kind of slow myself down on because it was very easy for me to get hooked on and possibly binge the entire show in a day as it's only eight episodes. And I mean, throughout the show, um, we get to know, you know, many of these characters and kind of see their demise along the way. They come um, across as characters both to like in some ways and especially to despise in others. Many of them kind of being this um, product of being raised uh, as a spoiled rich kid or inheriting wealth a little bit later in life and kind of becoming self-centered, narcissistic, and just horrible in various ways. In various ways. But um, even with that, somehow I wanted to know everything about everything, all these characters, and just kind of stick around to see not just their demise, but also um, the aftermath of that, you know, um, especially to hear a bit more about the lives that these families, uh, that these family members have in general. So we hear how they came to be like this um, and you know, I found some of these characters somehow to be both really cool and gorgeous and all that, but also very disgusting and self-centered. But the show really hooked me in early on. You know, we get to see this family um, at its as it currently stands at a funeral, the head of the family being interviewed um, as he kind of confesses to some crimes that, you know, he's committed and his company has. But, um, you know, not before basically telling us his whole life story. He's setting the stage for everything that led up to all of these events starting with his, you know, being younger in the 60s and then his kind of rise throughout the 70s and 80s. Um, so we get to see like how he was brought up, how he got into this pharmaceutical company, which is where he's kind of made most of his fortune and some of the troubles throughout the years. All of this kind of leads us through to see not just how the various characters were killed off, but um, both why and kind of by what, you know, what's really behind all of this, why they are all are meeting their untimely divide, uh, demise. So we have, you know, mystery, family legal drama stuff set with this horror aspect in the form of Edgar Allan Poe inspired events. Every episode left me wanting to watch the next one. Now, as for the performances of everybody within it, this they were top notch. You know, we get some Mike Flanagan staples such as Carla Gugino, Samantha Sloyan, Raul Cooley, Akoli, um, Kate Siegel, Matt Bidel, and several others, but um, for me, it was Henry Thomas who really uh, stood, you know, he's one of them, in my opinion, who really brought in a great performance, um, even better than his work in previous Flanagan uh, films and projects that he was associated with. He really was a standout among the cast. Same thing with somebody who I believe is a newcomer to Flanagan's work, um, being Mark Hamill, who was given some material which really separated him from his better known role as Luke Skywalker. But with both Thomas and Hamill, I felt like I was seeing them pull apart from their most popular roles of Elliot from E.T. and Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. It was kind of like they were finally getting their due as actors. Um, 
as if the entertainment industry was really having a hard time trying to separate them, like accept them outside of their most popular roles, but now they are finally really getting to shine. And of course, another great standout, which was surprising to see, was a Carl Lumbly, who um, I dimly remember him from the 90s show Mantis, but I especially remember him from Buckaroo Banzai, Doctor Sleep, and Falcon and a Winter Soldier. Great performance with the strength and class, with um, most of his time spent one-on-one -on -one in scenes with uh, Bruce Greenwood, who plays Roderick Usher, you know, who's like, he's kind of like receiving this confession from him. And um, the two of them deliver some extremely powerful exchanges, really powerful acting that's really driving this story forward, constantly keeping me um, on the edge of my seat where I wanted to really see where this story goes. And where does it go? Well, um, to a nice wrapped up ending. And uh, as all of these events of Roderick Usher's life have been laid out and woven into this story, leading you to a conclusion which, you know, in some ways is very dark, twisted, yet in other ways is kind of uplifting, both in knowing that some characters within this story do kind of survive and are able to make the best of the situation um, of this family and this large company kind of falling apart, while others, you know, it's also uplifting knowing that, you know, even though this family had so much wealth and fortune that that's not really the answer to all of life's problems and in many cases can cause a lot of problems as well. But anyways, you know, though I never actually finished The Midnight Club, you know, I felt like I wasn't really the target audience, and at this point, it doesn't really matter since they had canceled the show. I really enjoyed uh, Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor especially, um, as well as uh, Midnight Mass, I thought was simply amazing. But Fall of the House of Usher is perhaps my favorite of Flanagan's work so far. It's really a standout in his career, which surprised me the entire time, and I was so happy that I decided to give it a try and check it out. And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out this latest video here for The Fall of House of Usher, which is a Netflix production, so it's on Netflix. Um, eight episodes range from anywhere from 50 minutes to about an hour and 10 minutes, I think. Each one just flew by over this past week as I just rocketed right through this one. So, um, yeah, that's my little review slash recommendation for The Fall of the House of Usher. Um, you know, a thriller mystery, um, family legal drama with Edgar Allan Poe inspired horror elements heavily heaped all over it. And if all that sounds interesting, then head on over and give it a watch. Anyways, um, thanks for coming by. That's about all I got for this one, and I will see you in the next one.